Welcome back. So it's been a few days since the last update, so I wanted to let you know how things are going. Um, I got the parts that I needed for the new um, brake pads and also the O-rings for the main wheel and also one for the nose wheel because I replaced that, o that uh, nose wheel tire a while back but at the time I didn't have a new O-ring so it was slowly leaking down over time just you know a couple of PSI you know every few weeks so I've changed that one out and also assembled the other wheel on the other side um, and just done the conditioning on the brakes just now so the because the discs were showing a little bit of sign of uh, glazing on them so with the new pads on there I went out and did the conditioning so the conditioning procedure is basically taxi for about 1500 feet total just slowly with the brakes on um, enough that you're warming up the brakes and then you do a run to about 20 knots and then just get on the brakes sort of again slightly and slow the aircraft down to about five knots without doing a complete stop and that's you do that twice and that warms up the brakes enough so then you let everything sit and cool down for about 15 minutes and then after doing that you, you put the park brake on and stand on the brakes and you bring that uh, engine up to full power and it should be able to hold the aircraft um, the brake should be able to hold the aircraft from rolling forward at full power so it took me about three or four tries about four tries altogether to get it um, to bed in like that so it's working fine now um, brakes are conditioned just as good as they were before and I've looked at the the, um, the discs here and I'll show you in a little bit um, they looking better now so the, the little bit of glazing that was starting to form is sort of uh, dissipating now so my procedures now as I said are going to be to take the aircraft out just do one run and then uh, let everything cool down for about a half an hour because the brakes right now just the tires just from doing the conditioning all the heat that builds up in the brakes transfers into the rims because they're aluminum and then that heat transfers into the tires and just holding your hand on the tires now they're hot um, just from doing the conditioning and you know I'm not going to put my hand on the brakes and I you know I don't have my uh, my thermal uh, camera handy but I might pull that out in a second and see if I can if it's the batteries charged up to see if I can get a temp reading um, as they're cooling down here a little bit uh, anyway so the next step is uh, to do get it back out on the runway and uh, and do another run with just adding a little bit more uh, elevator trim here so um, it's probably going to be tomorrow it's already stinking hot here it's about 92 and super humid and the traffic is favoring the 3.5 today and I've been using 1.7 I want to kind of stick with what I've been using just because I'm familiar with going down that way uh, so it's going to be probably first thing in the morning but now that everything's dialed in the conditioning's done and that because it took me a, a good hour or more to do the conditioning with the 15 minute waits every time uh, so I should be able to get the that run done in the morning and then we'll we'll see how we go all right so this is taking a look at how this wheel angle is now that I've put that shim in there one on both sides so I wanted to try and get it close to 90 as I can so you see I've got 89.5 there now and that's as good as I'm going to be able to get it there because the next shim just is going to add a basically another degree and then over on this side we've got uh, pretty much right on 90 once you hold it there 89 9 90 degrees so uh, you know that's going to change the look of the aircraft now make it look so the wheels are straight up and down as you can see there so they don't look like they're sort of stretched outwards anymore so that's a plus and uh, lastly on this the aircraft there I wanted to show you how that brake uh, disc looks there after the conditioning now so some of that um, glazing that was there or most of that glazing that was there now is kind of gone and imagine just if I take care of the brakes now it'll completely disappear all right something else that I've been looking at that I thought you guys might be interested in is um, some a new or a feature in the i2 Motec i2 software that I've sort of just been playing with over the last couple of days so they've got this ability and again the i2 software is an analysis software that allows you to look at more detail of the logs coming off of the ECU uh, so one of the features they have in here is this math function and in here you can create expressions using um, existing uh, data points that you know are coming off the ECU and to create a new uh, type of data point and then you can also you know create new data points using that data point so it's sort of fairly infinite I guess um, 
creating these expressions. And so what I've done is I went over to uh, the Garrett website and they have a, um, this uh, page on their website which allows you to do a bunch of math there to figure out what size turbo that you need to have on your given engine um, based upon how much horsepower that you want to achieve. And so th these uh, functions that they provide here are pretty much what I need um, to figure out what horsepower I've got um, by just transforming them around. So for example, this one is the airflow it is equal to the horsepower times the air fuel ratio times the brake specific fuel consumption divided by 60. And I can uh, get the airflow myself uh, from the engine um, and just transform this around and get the horsepower. Um, and then likewise down here, this is a manifold pressure and it's you uh, use these other things there, airflow or whatever. I won't go into all the detail and stuff, but basically I just transform this around because um, I know the manifold pressure, it's being measured and I can get the airflow from there. So basically start with this one, know the manifold pressure and temperatures and and you see the other items here, volumetric efficiency, the RPM, all that sort of stuff. I can get the the airflow, and then um, using the airflow, I can get the horsepower because I know these other values. And I've made a couple of assumptions in here. I'm using 0.326 for the brake specific fuel consumption. That's a published number by Audi for this engine. Um, Garrett's using uh, 0.38 for the 6.6 .6 liter diesel uh, example that they're doing here, and. The other uh, assumptions I've made here are basically the same as theirs. I'm using the volumetric efficiency of 98%, and the rest of it are all just constants that um, I'm using, or some, that the same as what they're using, or it's uh, data that I'm actually pulling off the engine. So going back over here, you see the airflow actual cal calculating that using the manifold pressure, the efficiency, the RPM, displacement of the engine, and then the temperature in there um, the inlet temperature and there's a couple of constants in there and once I have that airflow I can use that to calculate the, at the uh, horsepower based upon the air fuel ratio and the brake specific fuel consumption and then from there I can calculate the torque um, based upon the 52-52 constant and the uh, engine speed uh, sorry yeah the horse horsepower the engine speed and that constant so um, once that's all done you can actually plot those values so looking back here, this is uh, the last time I had the aircraft out on the runway where I did the five runs. And if we just choose this second run, just to sort of look at, you'll see here um, where I come in on the throttle there, I had the governor set back a little bit. So basically around about 3,400 RPM there, you see. And the fuel mass 95, it's, that's still a little bit rich. So I'm gonna dial that back to 90 because I experimented going back to 95 again. I'm just on the edge of getting black smoke. So I wanna just dial it back to 90. I don't need that last little five milligrams of fuel. Uh, but anyway, if you come down here, you can see the fuel, air fuel ratio there. It's a bit difficult to read in the rear, but it's 14.55 there. And that's about right for um, an efficient diesel engine. Um, you know, not, not running too rich or too lean. And then from there, the, the, the airflow I'm getting is 33.29, uh, and that's again calculated um, using that expression. And then from there, I've got the horsepower and the torque. So this is showing 420 horsepower and 645 uh, foot pounds of torque. And you know, this is calculated values, and calculated would mean probably at the crank. Um, how much I'm actually getting out of the engine is, um, you know, probably less than that, obviously, because I'm going to have. Um, different um, you know friction and stuff in the redrive that's going to you know drop the power output that's actually at the prop but at least now I have something where I can just look at it fairly quickly and and uh, compare one run to the other and see how the horsepower is because um, you know a lot of the things that you got to factor in is the temperature makes a huge difference on uh, colder intake air as to what the uh, horsepower ends up being so um, and if you look on the intake air here you see 130 degrees is about sort of standard, but you see it fairly quickly climbing there, and it, you know r right up here it gets to 166 degrees. Um, but the horsepower actually ends up staying around about the same, and that's mainly because the boost is building as well. Um, you'll see there's a slight boost increase uh, over here. This purple one boost is increasing at the same rate is what the uh, temperature is increasing so you still end up having the same amount of horsepower 
Um, anyway, um, also too looking at the fuel flow here, if we go back there in the middle of that power run there, 20.6, and I've been saying for a long time now, um, 20 gallons an hour, if you just multiply the gallons per hour by 20, you end up getting pretty close to what the horsepower output's gonna be, so yeah, it's pretty close there. Um, anyway, I just thought that'd be interesting, and I'll be probably showing this some more once I get this um, out on the runway again, and I dial that fuel mass back to 90. And we'll see, I just wanna make sure we get 400 horsepower, or at least on the book value of 400 horsepower, and I'll be happy. Uh, so I thought you might be interested in seeing that, maybe not, um, and probably you know spike a whole bunch of comments here on this video saying, oh, well, this is not right, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, all that's done using math and calculated uh, using known formulas. So um, you know, at some point you have to believe the science a little bit. Anyway, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll, uh, show you this again on uh, some of the future runs anyway that's going to be this update i know it's short um, but i have been working on stuff and also too i had to take um, cowlings off again i'd had this minor um, coolant leak and i spent most of yesterday actually working on that so one of the hoses there that transfers uh, coolant to the turbos uh, had a leak on the fitting so i had to redo that and you know to get to it was difficult because it's in the top V of the engine. So I haven't been sitting around by any means. I've been working my butt off trying to get all this done. Uh, anyway, so this is the update, I guess, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.